So, our next speaker is uh, Linda Bells, and... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what can one say? Yeah. But quite a lot, don't you worry. <laughs> um, Linda was born Linda Adeboali in London in 1950. She has two children who are now 45 and 43. She came out as a lesbian in 1979. She worked at Spare Rib Magazine from 1981 to 83, and the Women's Unit of the GLC from 1984 to 86. She was an active member of Women Against Violence Against Women, 1982 to 84, and co-organiser of Black Feminist Conference London 1983, and Black Lesbian Conference 1984. Linda was also council leader of Lambeth in 1986 to 88. Linda has also been actively involved in community politics since the mid-1970s. She came out as a lesbian and became a feminist in the late 1970s. She joined the Spare Rib Collective in 81 and demanded that lesbians be encouraged to be out. In the following years, she organised, yes, black feminism, black lesbian conferences, slightly repetitive here, I think. She argued strongly against the notion of a hierarchy of oppression. And since those early days, she has become a leading authority on equality and human rights law and its practical application across the private sector. She was awarded an OBE for her services to diversity in the 2007 New Year's Honours List. In 1987, as chair of the London Strategic Policy Unit, she was responsible for introducing Black History Month to the UK. Linda is a regular guest contributor on national radio and television programmes. Not anymore. <laughs> Well, would that. Speaking mainly on current equality and diversity issues, she's in great demand as a chairperson and speaker at conferences across the UK. She's a published author and has written many essays and letters on equality and diversity topics. Over to you, Linda. Hmm. Well, frankly, I'm, I am at a loss to follow Paula. Your... Your analysis, your honesty, is actually very moving. And it does feel like being a feminist again, after we've had a period of very wet feminism. I think it feels like a fight back. But actually, I want to speak about some of the things that get in the way. And some of that is, uh, now what's the word? And I do have a problem trying to find words. I know it, it but uh, a kind of guilt amongst many white women, including those of you here today, around racism. Uh, the, the discrimination our society, and therefore we, do to disabled women. There's a whole list, and actually what I want to do, if I may, is um, not provide an analysis, but do a little bit of training to tell you what the law of this country actually says. And for anyone who lives in Europe, what I have discovered is Britain gets its policies actually from Europe, except that our, MP, our um, leaders of political parties failed to tell us that. I'm delighted to say that Europe has some bloody good policies and, like Britain, doesn't put them into effect. But let me tell you what our laws say now. We have laws against, and I'm going to have a, a mention a word I can't bear, race. I don't know what a race is. I mean, except, I know a human race, but when we start talking about black people, for example, as having a race, what exactly do you think it means? There is racism without doubt, but there's only one race, it's called the human race. Racists insist that if you have a little bit of melanin in your skin, you are black. In Britain we've had in the last number of years uh, the term black and Asian. Have you heard it, those of you from Britain? 
and I want to know where is black. I know where Asia is, but where exactly is black? <laughs> Another opportunity to divide and rule, and Britain has been very, very good at it. So, we have in statute, and because I um, forgot to bring the documents I wanted, which is actually called the Equality Act, 2010, but it's in my head, thankfully. I want British women here to be aware that all have equal power. There is no hierarchy which puts race, that ghastly word, above anything else. They are all of equal value. Race, sex, age, disability, and I can't remember the rest. You've got them, thank you. Thank you. Can you find the page for me? Because I... Somebody find the page. The new one is gender reassignment. Now be clear here. We should be using this against them. It is a person who has undertaken a rather Shenzi process, but it's a medical process, of reassigning their gender. I have some sympathy with some of those <coughs> young men and women who are persuaded by doctors to reassign their gender. Particularly these days, if they're like me, a bit butch, I would be, as a young person, if I were a young person, being, I would be encouraged to reassign to become a man. That is what is happening. Thank you. Let's see if I left anything out. Mm -hmm. Pregnancy and maternity, marriage and civil partnership, sexual orientation, sex, religion and belief, race, gender reassignment, diverse, diversity, uh, sorry, disability and age. Those are the protected characteristics. <laughs> And certain things are required, particularly of public authorities, including the government. So we could and should be pressuring the government to comply with laws which they are required to implement. But they don't know, and I think they, we should force them to know what the law actually says. Class is very much a man-made notion, as is race. Um, gender used not to be, well at least, the, actually I should say sex, uh, was pretty much a nat uh, natural thing. I still think it is, and I think most women will be persuaded, in terms of uh, the political work that we should be doing, that sex it relates to us being a boy or a girl when we're born. There are a small, a small number of children, babies, who are intersex. Let's not confuse intersex with transsexual. Transsexual is an entirely political move to, I think it, se it seems to me, to silence all women. That's its purpose. Well, its, it's effect, whether it's the purpose of everybody who identifies as trans, is another matter, but it certainly is in fact, and I believe that we, as women, have a right to defend ourselves. I do not mean, and I was, in, uh, I was interpreted as meaning that we'll be physically violent. Um, and I was with, uh, who's, oh no, she's not here, but uh, two of us were taken to court privately by a man in a very long silly dress um, <laughs> on the ground. I can't quite say, what, does anyone remember what the grounds were? But I, I apparently had a threatened... It was inside the, to, to uh, what's it, the piece? Oh, yeah. And to, yeah, to, to incite women to... Be, be violent to, 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 to transit. Women. And it's extraordinary that by the time it came to court, one year had elapsed. And not one single trans person had been abused by any women. Isn't that odd? Mm. 
the law is quite clear, but it's also very clear to me, and it has been for quite a few decades, that most people don't know, most people in England and Wales and Scotland and the six counties of Ireland don't know what our equality laws say. I have found it very useful to quote the law and casework at them. They try to make, uh, they try to make a, I don't know, what, what kind of, what would you describe the case that is being made, a sort of uh, radical case that trans somehow is more important than anything else, and it is whatever they say it is. It's not related to the law. I'm not a keen fan of the gender recognition provision in law. However, I uphold it because I want people to uphold all of, all the rest. So the one related to us as women, certainly the one relating to race, it's not a matter of whether we like the law or not. I believe that we should. This is my this is liberal crap I've grown into. But, <laughs> but I uphold the law unless and until Parliament can be persuaded to change the law. And I think that in view of the behaviours of many in defending gender reassignment, I think we have a very good case to make that an incoming government, or a government, when they are, they are uh, we, or those of us who are prepared to <sighs> spend our time with the law, should get that law changed, the, the reference to gender reassignment. I think we have, they are giving us the evidence of why gender reassignment as a uh, protected characteristic is dangerous to half the population, in other words, women. And I may be losing my memory, but I haven't lost my soul. My soul tells me that equality is a right of every human being. My judgment, my experience tells me, it isn't provided to every human being. As we, I hope, rebuild or create a new women's liberation movement, I hope we do it this time, I think we have to take on board what the law actually says, even if we we'll leave the one about gender reassignment, I think we should be thinking in a, in a, a different thing because it's, it shouldn't be there. Or if, if it is there, it will be for a few hundred people, not a uh, provision that seems to be touching anyone who claims to be trans. I'm not sure I want to say very much more. I, uh, I find it a bit problematic talking about the bloody law. And certainly in my more radical days, I was more prepared to um, put the law aside. I, I guess I'm not anymore, but I think that I and others can be very useful in that strand of our fight back. But it's absolutely vital that we women fight back in whatever ways. And when I say fight back, I don't mean slapping those silly idiots round the chops. And I'm not suggesting that. It, it wouldn't work as a, as a, as a strategy. Uh, but, but it is important that some of us take on the law, because it's law that has been passed by Parliament. It's on statute. And when we know it's being broken, I believe we have a duty to hold them to account. That's what all of the things that are going on currently about whether we leave Europe or not, about the law. If the law is important in relation to that, it is even more important to half the population, those of us who are women or girls. I think that's all I want to say.